Welcome, my name is Dwayne Anderson with VM Training. We're going to do a quick walkthrough on snapshots and how they work and look at a little bit more detail than just the basic how-to. I'm not going to walk through and show you how to take a snapshot. I'm going to show you what happens on the back end and take a look at some file level so that you can understand what is really happening within the architecture so that you can see what snapshots are doing and what they're not doing so that you don't make mistakes when things come uh, to fruition and you need to utilize them and you want to make sure that you're not messing things up. So first of all we've got this VM76-4 here and if I go to edit settings we'll see that the hard drive is 2.99 gigabytes in size. That's a approximately 3063 megabytes is about the size of that. Yes, it's a very small hard drive. This is just a testing center. Uh, this is what our students utilize uh, in class to practice many, many labs, including distributed switches and everything associated with that storage connectivity. We're looking primarily at the snapshots themselves. So don't worry about the size of the drive and say, oh, that's not production. What is relevant here is the correlation. When you take what we're looking at and you correlate that into a production environment, you'll find out really quickly that this stuff can escalate beyond most people's thought process or imagination. So we'll cancel that. And I'm going to pull that 76-4 up here. And as you can see, I have a folder here called revert to snap on. I'm at the very end of the whole snapshotting session. This is the last thing that we had done here. But let's go understand what's happening. So I'm pulling up the snapshot manager and I want you to take note here that I have taken four different snapshots. So snapshot one was the very first I did all the way through snapshot four and I've reverted back to what is called snapshot one. And notice here it says you are here. What the heck does that even mean? Is that really accurate? Well, I'm going to argue that that may not be very accurate depending upon how you understand what's happening. Technically it is, but we need to understand what this snap one actually means. Now, before we go any further, I want you to remember that notice I've got a time here. It's always important to put a time in your snapshot name along with a description which I didn't do because this is just a, a test we're just doing a trial run through here now why is it because when you look at these snapshots if you don't put a time if you don't put a description you don't know anything you, there's nothing here that's relevant unless what unless you go back to the storage itself and look at these files directly now let's understand what's actually happened here so this right here that I have highlighted is the flat file. This is the virtual machine hard drive that contains the actual data. Notice the size, okay? That's that not quite three gigabytes in size. All right, not a big one. Notice the last time it was written to 2057. All right, so what's the next thing here? Well, 2057 we created a new VMDK file now this new VMDK file is actually called a sparse file and I'll show that to you here in a moment this is the descriptor file for what for this Delta file this Delta file is the first file that was created after the snapshot was taken now what do we mean by that after the snapshot was taken well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull up a spreadsheet that kind of does a walkthrough on what I've done. So when I got started here, I opened the console and just took a look at that hard drive, which is exactly what we just did. We see the size hasn't changed, and we see the name of the file, which is that flat VMDK. And then we took a snapshot. Now what happens is, is when you take the snapshot, it actually makes this flat file a read-only file. Okay? Makes the snapshot a read-only file. And then, after I took that snapshot, I went and took a look at what I'm calling snap1, but I want you to take note that snap1 
it not only makes a flat file read only, but it makes a new delta file. This delta 1 is a read write file, and every change made to the hard drive occurs within this file now, not on the original. Now, just to help add to that a little bit, this here is the original hard drive. Okay? Now, what happened was we took this snap one. Snap one makes, notice I got this blue arrow here, it makes the original hard drive read only. And then it creates a delta file that becomes read write on the delta one. When I take a snap two, it makes the delta one read only, and it creates a new delta two file that is then read write. So one of the things that we have to remember was when we look at snap two, it's actually pointing to the original delta one file, which was created after snapshot one was taken. So a snapshot file, when it comes to hard drives, we're not looking at memory because memory is just a snapshot of the memory at that given point in time. So when we create that snapshot, it is stopping the hard drive where it was. Nothing can happen to it. And then creating a new drive, sparse file, that we add and subtract to. And that sparse file can grow and shrink based upon what you're doing to that given drive itself. Okay? So that's one of the things that's interesting here. Now let's go back here to our spreadsheet. So we've looked at that snapshot. We saw that it was 16 megabytes in, in size. And I added files to the hard drive. What it did is it grew the snapshot but the original stayed the same. It grew the snapshot 160 megs and now all of a sudden that thing is 3,223 megabytes in size which is 160, 140, or sorry, 180 megabytes larger than, 280 megabytes lar larger than. So again, this 3,223 megabyte file is approximately 160 megabytes larger than the maximum size of the hard drive for that virtual machine. And then we continued on. So we took the snapshot 2. Remember, snapshot 2 is going to do what? That's right, it's going to make snapshot 1 read only. And then it's going to create a new file called delta 2 that is read write. You can see here that our snapshot one is still 160 megabytes in size and we have a new delta 2 file that is 16. I add files, what does it do? It changes the delta 2 file. And now all of a sudden that's 320 megabytes in size and now we're 480 megabytes larger than the original. We can follow down through here and we can see the same thing. When you take a snapshot, it's going to create a new delta file that's read-write. Everything else is read-only and we just keep adding. Snap, when we took snap 4, created a delta 4 file. Boom, 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 boom. Now we got four files totaling 3575. Now this is where things I think get interesting. At this point in time, I reverted back to snapshot number one. What did I say that did? That's right. When I reverted back to snapshot, it points to the original hard drive. So it actually went back and started us off as if nothing had been done, period. We bypassed every single change that had been made. But what happens at the file level? Good question. I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> So what happens at the file level here is that that delta 4 disappears and it creates a new delta 5. Why? Well, the delta 4 was the read-write file at the time after snapshot 4. We're not, we didn't try to save any of that. We didn't make a new snapshot to save that. So we lost everything that we did 
from the moment we took snapshot 4 until now. Now we're reverting back to delta 1, sorry, we're reverting back to snapshot 1, which is pointing to the flat file. Hopefully you caught that. So we reverted back to here, but it created a new read-write delta file. Nice, huh? So that's how things function here. Coming back to our spreadsheet. Because we have a new delta file, the delta 4 is gone. So now we have a delta 1, delta 2, delta 3, and a delta 5. No delta 4. Delta 5 happens to be 32 megabytes in size. Now we're at 3591. Guess what? We're going to add some more stuff to the hard drive and another 224 megabytes. And now we're at 3783. Now we're 720 megabytes larger than the maximum size of this hard drive. And yes, things can get crazy when we're dealing with large files, big databases. It can cause us a lot of fits. But the important thing is to see and understand how things work down here at the file level itself. Now I told you that these 00 numbered VMDKs that have to do with the snapshots are sparse files. Well, we first need to take a look at the original VMDK so that we can understand what the difference even is. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to open up Vi Editor and we're going to do a take a look here at this particular VM76-4 and we're just going to go right to the VMDK itself. Now remember the flat file contains the da data. The standard VMDK file is a descriptor file that describes the data file itself. So I'm going to hit enter on this. Now you'll notice that this has your heads, sectors, cylinders, all, all of that associated with it, your virtual hardware version has you know your VMware tools, a few other things, all of the geometry that's associated with it, all the things you might expect. Now I want you to just take a look here. This is a standard VMFS file. It is not a native snapshot. It does not have a parent CID and it is a standard VMFS. In other words, this functions just like a normal standard hard drive. Nothing out of the ordinary here. So let's quit that. And now we're going to do that same thing, except we're going to do the, I better do the listing, otherwise I'll get the wrong one. I missed the dash, didn't I? So we'll just look at the one.vmdk, because they're all going to be very similar. So here's our delta file. Now notice here this is not a VMFS. It's called a sparse file. And notice there's no geometry down here in any way, shape, or form. And it does have a parent file name with a parent CID. Interesting, huh? Nice. Now all that's really important here for you guys to understand is that a sparse file grows and shrinks as it's being called upon during its read-write session so that when and if you revert to or delete all the snapshots and keep what we have, all of that's going to be good. All right. Now what I'm going to do here is go back to our snapshot manager. We are here. We'll come back and take a look at this. Now remember I showed you this and it had the snapshot one file folder there, the revert to snapshot one folder and I had added a few things in there. So what I want to do there now is I'm going to actually delete all of these, okay? All right, I'm going to delete all, which means that it is going to maintain my current location. Anything that I had saved prior to snapshot two, anything that I had saved prior to snapshot three, and anything that I had saved prior to snapshot 4 is going to be lost. However, everything that I have done since reverting to snapshot 1 is going to be maintained. So that means that that delta 5 is going to be migrated into the original hard drive 
and it will be disappeared. It will go away. Okay, so I'm going to click yes here, and we've got to be patient. I'm going to go ahead and get logged in here because this will take a little bit of time. So you notice here, this was the revert to snapshot one. I'm not losing any of that data. I got to enter this, uh, I got to exit the Vi editor. Now, interesting, huh? Absolutely no other delta files, but guess what? We do have that flat file, notice 32117882888. That's the only file left in the list. And when we go back to our spreadsheet, guess what? That's the exact same size of, of the file. We've lost nothing. We have maintained exactly what we wanted. And now we're back to the maximum size of that file. And we've saved 720 megabytes worth of hard drive space. So that's a brief run through on snapshotting. I hope this was beneficial for you. Thank you very much for your time.